Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season premiere of The Walking Dead. A very great uh, premiere. Um, I like what this episode, obviously, hitting off strong. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is like episode 100. Isn't it? I think I remember seeing promotional stuff being like, oh, the 100th episode. So that's pretty cool. But uh, essentially, obviously, this is like set up, obviously, for like the entire season. I mean, granted, I don't know if it's like going to be like the first half of the season is going to be about just the fight against Negan in a second. Whatever the case may be, that's me getting too far ahead of myself. We'll kind of dive into that later on. But obviously, you have a lot of setup in this episode. Um, everyone playing these different little small parts all together, some grand plan to kind of get the ball rolling because it's just like, like this episode was a lot of setup for the plan and while also initiating it. Um, an interesting thing that popped up this episode, I, I, I'm trying to remember, I don't think he ever did, and that's, uh, Rick went to Abraham and Glenn's graves. I don't think he ever went to them at all last season, like, at least within the confines of the episode, maybe, like, in between or something like that we never saw. Maybe he did, but I think this is the first time he's actually visited her graves. I mean, mainly because there was probably no time to really do it, but like I said, there might be some in-between stuff. It's like, oh yeah, he actually visited them here, here, whatever the case may be. And basically, it's everyone uniting. Obviously, a lot of stuff that was said last season of, like, the saviors are basically trying to take everything for themselves, specifically Negan, and trying to shape it in their own way. It's like, we're trying to make this world that, you know, don't be an asshole, essentially. It's like, we're trying to live and survive and make this world for everyone, for our children, for our children's children. This world is kind of being, is to be shaped for everyone's future, not just shaped to fit our needs, which is what Negan does. He basically shapes the world to fit him. It's like, follow him, be one of his saviors, be be like him. I mean, because even when you actually break it down, think about the saviors, it's like, what do they say? We are Negan. So it's like a mindset of like him. They, almost a mindset of like, even if he's, I guess when, I never really thought of it too much, but I guess like when you break it down, like that's Negan's way of being like, I'm forever. So even if you take me out, the idea of me continues on and on. So, I mean, when you actually break it down too, it's kind of almost like a clash of beliefs too. Like kind of a clash for this isn't about me being Rick and, um, well, Alexandria, Hilltop, and the Kingdom kind of harboring that concept. And we have Negan where it's like, it's all about me. So, kind of, kind of, kind of a clash of those ideals. And obviously Rick being like, yo, I'm going to kill you, Negan. I need you to know that. I did also like that angle of like, oh, I'm letting everyone here go. Even though you people have caused problems in your own way, especially you, Eugene. Eugene tried to even try to explain himself, but like, Rick kind of shut him off because it's like, no matter what, you had opportunities to kind of change things, but I am curious to see what they do with Eugene this season, because it seems like he's not backing down, and at this point, you can't back down anyway, because it's like, it's all or nothing now, like, everyone is, like, in this fight, rare, uh, raring to go, so there's no more, like, maybe last season would have been his chance he should have taken the opportunity, but, you know, a combination of being too scared and just, which it's rightfully so. Like, everyone was scared, but the thing is what you do with your fear and just, it just sucks that now they're on opposite ties. But he gave everyone a chance, like, you can run, you can run. It's like, Simon, you can run. Dwight, you can run, even though you're technically, you know, we're working with us and everything. So, but he's like, you, Nikki, you're dead. And then there's um, obviously a big part of their plan, obviously gathering up walkers, which I guess ultimately is kind of a reflection of like when they first got to out. Al- Cause there's a lot of stuff in this episode. It seems like it's, I don't know whether homages or reflections of certain things that have come up in the past. Like for example, them leading all those walkers. That was how season six began because that was like Rick's big plan. Like when they got to Alexandria, Grant. did it work? No, kind of the pooch kind of got screwed over, but it's like, it seems like they're almost doing that. Obviously it's meant to like infiltrate the, um, Savior's facility and everything, so it, it just makes it, it's just, like, interesting, like, I wonder, was that supposed to be kind of a reflection of that idea, just kind of brought the light and used in a more offensive manner, rather than back then, which was meant to be as a, a defensive manner of, like, okay, eventually all those zombies will pour into words, like, Alexandria, let's pull them off somewhere else, like, then, as we remember, it didn't work out, there's also a scene later on in the episode, uh, first of all, I'll kind of, like, lead up to it by being, like, Screw Gregory. As like that piece of crap for one selling them out. And I love Jesus line of being like, okay, no, I'm not really that surprised. Of course, this is where he'd be. I'm um, trying to sell them out. But Hilltop is like, no, we're not listening to you. 
I mean, because the one that's really helped out in the long run is Maggie, because everything Gregory's always done, and I guess it kind of fits with the whole motif of the Saviors. It's like, you know, he's all about himself, too, so he doesn't fit with what everyone's trying to build anyway. So, but Gabriel went back, went back to save him. I was like, you don't do it, Gabriel. Gabriel, oh, Gabriel, which in retrospect, it's like that shows you how much of growth he's changed. I mean, that's always something he thanks Rick for, because the fact of the matter is he's like, you know, I was a very different person back then. Let's not forget how they actually met Gabriel initially. He shut the doors on all of the people that were trying to get into his church. And for him to, I guess, in a way, it's just like him, like, you know, as he is now, it's like, we're all in this together. Like, no matter how much of a piece of crap you are, like, I'm not going to let you die. But he didn't feel the same because he got in the car. I cannot wait until they cross paths with Gregory. It's like, wait, this car, this was Gabriel's. I kind of get the feeling he's going to get his ass kicked. I don't know. Maybe I could be completely wrong, but it's like you kind of deserve to get your ass kicked. Not saying you deserve to die, but you deserve to get your ass kicked for kind of being a piece of crap human being, especially under these circumstances. You sold them out once, and then you immediately sold them out again when they're trying to save your life, especially Gabriel. Like, legitimately, there was a part of me that's like, I, I said I don't want him to die, but there's a part of me that's like, okay, tell me why you're running to the car. You catch a stray bullet or something. Oh, never, sadly not. Also, like, that whole situation of them unloading on the building was pretty brutal. I don't think we've ever seen, like, a heavy, heavy gunfight. Like, I mean, it wasn't even a gunfight. It was more like a one-sided thing. It does make you wonder where the rest of everyone else was during that whole situation. I'm curious, like, in the next episode, will we kind of see, like, the savior side of things or not? Because it seems like they're the only ones that came up. So I am curious, like, were there actually any people in the facility? Or were they somewhere else preparing for an attack? Or are they still there, but now they're trapped? And now they got to find a way around it? Because the only one that's outside during that particular event is Negan. And the fact is that he's there and everything makes me go, I don't know if that, like, it's just like him him and his top people are there. And then, no, because I feel like if they weren't, Dwight would have also said something. Because he set up the whole thing to be like, oh, take out the lookouts. Which that first lookout that kind of got taken out was kind of, it was just kind of like, that's kind of like just the way it was framed to like him just kind of getting hit and then flipping it and falling forward and falling forward and flipping it and hitting the ground. It's like, I just like the way that was shot. I was like, oh, that's pretty, pretty like impressive how that was. Just me. I just, it's just the one that caught my eye the most. But getting back to what I was saying, because I'm sorry, I got him on a huge tangent, was interestingly enough, the thing is that Negan and Gabriel are trapped in the, um, uh, that trailer or, or, or vehicle or whatever uh, together, which I don't know if I saw that, was it a preview or, or the uh, San Diego Comic-Con trailer, I don't remember which one, but, um, I definitely remember seeing that particular scene, especially in line of it, like, oh, you're about to shit yourself, aren't you? Which I also love that line of him being like, I know this is like... You know, I'm not trying to, you know, get my people killed because I care about my people, you know, you know, like this ain't some like dick measuring contest. But if we, if it was, we know that I have a bigger dick. You know that. I know that. I hate you, Negan, but I love you at the same time. I love the fact that I hate you. I, I love to hate you. Um, but the fact is that they're stuck in there together. I was like, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, too, that particular situation, to me, it makes me think about Rick and Negan in season seven's premiere. Like after he had already killed, after he had killed Glenn and Abraham and was, you know, trying to make a point to um, Rick. To me, that like, like I said, I don't know if they purposely designed it like that or was that kind of the point and just them being trapped in particular, surrounded by like walkers like that. I don't know. I don't know, just like someone being, you know, stuck with Negan like that. So I'm curious to see what they do with Gabriel, like in this particular situation, whether he's going to be held as like a hostage or what. It's still a scenario of like, no matter what, because Rick was like, yeah, he felt bad, but it's like, no matter what. And it's something that Gabriel had told him. It's like, what makes the, what makes the, the difference between them and the saviors is the fact of the matter is like I brought up earlier. Saviors are all about, this is about one person because like all, all they want to do is kill Negan if anyone else gets in the way th then that that's that it's like no need to feel pride you know no reason to celebrate it but you shouldn't feel shame about it either because this is about but this is much bigger than one person this is bigger than all of them and that was something Gabriel like commented on like yeah the fact of the matter is like this all happened because of you and then Rick said it's not about me and Negan I mean and um Gabriel was like Yes, exactly. And you made it that way. And it's like, that's the point. That's what makes this situation so great is because you didn't make it about yourself. And so even though Gabriel's out there and he owes Gabriel, he's like, no, like the point is we have to go through with the plan. We can't stop for anything. 
you know, fighting for that tomorrow. So I am curious to see what they do with Gabriel. Um, I do appreciate there was a line of dialogue between two people, too. It's like somebody from the uh, kingdom and somebody from like Alexandria or Hilltop and they're like, and she, um, the lady's like, okay, I got your back. It's like, but we just met. It's like, we all just met. Or am I thinking of someone else? Either way, I, I like that immediately being like setting the tone of like, yeah, we are strangers. We met each other not that long ago, but the fact that managers were in this together for this fight, that means I got your back, you know? You need someone to cover you. I got you. And I just like that immediate um, camaraderie that's built up, you know. So I just thought that was just kind of a, you know, it's just a small thing to kind of already like there's so much heaviness behind it, you know, without getting too deep on it or whatever. But it's just like just that line of dialogue means so much, you know. And there was also another line of dialogue that came from Carl in this episode that I thought was kind of interesting. Is the fact is that when he came across that dude who wanted food, but Rick scared him off. And while he was walking away, Carl's like, it's not enough. And Rick's like, what is it? And he's like, hope. Now, I didn't know how to interpret that because I feel like that could be interpreted two ways. Either it's like, it's not enough for us just to like hope to win this battle. Like we should have other people here, you know, to help increase our numbers, to increase our odds. It's like nice and dandy to have hope, but we also need to make sure we have the numbers too. So I don't know if it's that or whether it's more like we can have hope for ourselves and stuff, but don't forget about the other people because, because this is kind of more about like, not just about us, that this is about kind of everyone, not just the groups involved, but for everyone going forward in the future in this world we're trying to build. Then you know, that we shouldn't forget about the other people to, like, help them survive. I don't know. Because, obviously, they've always had their reluctancy about bringing new people into the group and bringing new people on the phone. That particular guy was like, well, we're in a state of war. And the fact of the matter is it could, that person could have been a spy. But it's just, like, I think it's just kind of like, don't let our pessimistic side, like, our negative side kind of outweigh, like, the good we could do or help other people who could also bring good into the world too essentially i don't know that's probably me reading too much into it it could be the former it could be the latter it could even be both i don't know that's just my thoughts on it i just that's how i saw it in those two different ways i mean arguably maybe you could say that like i said maybe they are one and the same i don't know uh there's also like this thing between rick and uh maggie was basically kind of like oh yeah like he's proud of where how she come how far she's come because she's leading hilltop i mean obviously like i used the example earlier like how like Everyone was like, nah, screw you, uh, Gregory, we're backing with Mac Maggie's the one we follow. So she's basically saying, like, the only reason why she got to this point is because she had like, Rick's leadership to be like, oh, yeah, like, I've learned from your example. But basically, he's like, when it's all said and done, I'm going to follow you. Which is going to be interesting if, if that's the case, like, going forward, like, Maggie is the one that, like, kind of takes the lead and stuff like that. I mean, she's proven herself to be a w well uh prepared leader as she's shown with hilltop so and maybe rick's kind of feeling like you know his time to lead isn't over because now like maggie can lead him in a new direction where my mindset is but um obviously i've kind of talked around it but obviously a big part of this too and obviously uh, me and i'm sure many others went into this knowing about the whole time skip situation still hazy on what that represents i was actually shocked to see we saw it in the first episode because immediately my brain was like okay we're not going to see that until like the mid-season finale and then it's gonna be like okay then we're gonna be living in that time skip zone but it's like no they immediately hit it off the bat of being like oh we're kind of showing you that time skip now arguably it could just be like a oh yeah dreaming of tomorrow but to me it's a situation it's kind of it seems like it might do like because i kind of brought it up when i talked about it it's like there's a lot of stuff more recently that's come out it's kind of like a um there's like a lot of time skips involved in a lot of stuff i'm watching this season um it, it seems like it might be something kind of similar to Ray Donovan, which is kind of interesting because I'm covering it out on Sunday nights too. But there's kind of a flashback and flash forward. Like obviously, it seems like the main focus of the season is going to be like the like the flash forwards are going to be like the side thing, whereas like the present day is like which is the past in this regard. So it's it's probably might be a situation like going forward that they might show us like bit by bit. It's like oh, we already know that this person's from because I mean in this regard it shows you that you know Rick is still there. Michonne is there and Carl is there so might arguably be like oh spoiling that for you but other people be like they're kind of like the three main people of the show it's not like they're going to kill them off at least not at this point in time so how far in the future that is I don't know but I, I mean I'm curious to see like like I said I'm so it seems like it might be something that they cut back and forth from here and now like I said maybe what I said was right except it's going to be like 
will be a hundred percent in the time skip, like around the mid season finale. So one so that might also say like whatever like no matter what the situation is with the saviors, whether it's win or lose, I mean in their mind it's like no matter what happens, we win because we stood up and we, we came together and we fought for tomorrow. Like the fact of the matter is we started like the moment we start tomorrow, it's like no waiting because I want that life. You want that life. There's no waiting. Like we go after it tomorrow. And the fact is we took that next step tomorrow makes all the difference. That and the fact is we took that step means we won no matter what happens. So but at the end of the day, win or lose with this whole savior situation, which you feel like if it was lose, Rick would be dead. Uh, like I said, but it still doesn't change the fact of the matter is you don't know who lives and who dies. I kind of have some guesses just in certain regards because it's like, why? Because I got stuff from the comic book spoiled for me. And so I can like, you know, the comic book and the show are obviously very different. I kind of alluded to this last season, too. So it's like it's up in the air being like, well, the fact of the matter is whether they'll follow the comic book in certain regards or not. So so like I said, I'm very interested to see what they do with this whole time skip, skip situation, because there's also like almost a in between time skip where you see like Rick kind of like teary eyes and stuff like that. So I can assume that's after like a lot of like. After it's all said and done, maybe this that's at one point during the war where they're on the heavily losing side, or maybe that's him crying after like a tear of relief because Negan's dead and every like you know he still lost people on his side, some good people that are important to him, or something. Maybe that's in the near future. Maybe that's far enough into the future. Like I said, I'm interested to see what they do in that regard. I'm also fascinated to see what else they have planned, like what else they, because that's the interesting thing too, because we're actually going into this season blind, not knowing exactly what they planned, like, like you had some ideas when you see them like executing their plan, but you had seen them like, okay, we're going to do this, do this, this and that, and it's like, no, they start taking out the people in the um, lookouts, they start gathering those walkers and trailing them towards the uh, Savior's sanctuary, but other than that, it's like, we don't really know what they have in mind we have michonne and carl kind of stand back and rosita uh back in alexandria kind of holding down the fort so like i said i'm interested to see what the saviors have planned like whether all of them are in the facility because we know like a lot of their uh top people got caught up in that trap that morgan carol daryl and terror were setting up with the uh car bombs and stuff like that so also what's going to happen to to dwight because you know he's their inside man in a, this whole grand scheme of things so because it's kind of interesting because I kind of uh, referenced uh, San Diego Comic-Con trailer. And, I, and it's actually kind of applies to everything I'm currently watching. Like, everything I saw a Comic-Con trailer for, I it's pretty much everything for the first episode, which I guess is kind of cool. Like, it's been a little while since I've seen it, so I don't remember. There's probably stuff from later episodes to mix in. But uh, that's why that whole future thing, like, the time skip stuff kind of cut me off guard because I was expecting it much later. But it seems like everything from those trailers seems to be pulled directly from the first episode. Maybe I just never really noticed that before now. I guess it's not until more recently that I started watching a lot of TV trailers. I used to not really catch them. I usually catch, like, previews on TV. So I guess that's why that's kind of something new to me. So, But anyway, like I said, a great episode, a great start to the season. Like I said, it's just kind of like we're seeing those early marches of like you know the war unfolding going forward so i don't know like you know obviously people have like their issues with the show when it comes to like like up and down time where there's like episodes where there's not a lot that happens and some episodes where there's a lot that i don't know how I, it feels like they're setting this season out to be a season of like boom 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 there's always going to be big movements going down any episodes going forward but i mean ultimately we'll have to see like either way whether it's an episode with a lot happening or a little you know i always appreciate those episodes when they just take a step back and they're like okay let's do some character development i'm always fine with those episodes too so i'm interested to see what they have like planned out for this season so i have not looked or read it anything aside from that san, uh, san diego comic-con trailer i've not seen anything else so uh and even then that was like a couple months ago so I'm very interested, like I said, to see what we have planned, what they have planned for this season. Also, I do apologize if I sound a little weird in this video or whatever, or, you, you know, hopefully I edited out a lot of me, like, dealing with my snotty nose a little bit uh, during this, but I just I haven't been feeling the best lately, so I do apologize about the quality of this podcast. Maybe you'll notice a difference. Maybe you won't. Maybe it's just all in me just because I'm here recording it, but I could just, I can hear it, but... Nevertheless, that's really all I want to talk about is uh, 
episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.